Hi, hello. Yes, that's right. Today we are redrawing cringe artwork. It's this artwork. Now, before you guys come at me, this is my old artwork, okay? So I can say whatever I want. And no, no, I'm not roasting Kuro here. It's Kuro, by the way. I'm roasting my drawing of him. But first, let me thank Colosso for sponsoring this video. Colosso is an online learning platform where you can learn from industry professionals in illustrations, animations, VFX, and many more. Colosso gave me access to their classes, Fundamentals of Stylized Character Art by Mogun, and Illustrating Male Characters with Perfect Line Art by Hyun Kyu Kim. These classes are perfect for me because I like drawing stylized hot male characters and let me tell you, these classes are very, very in-depth. I mean, it's more detailed than what I learned in college, honestly. And with the knowledge from these two classes, we will turn this cringy artwork into a better, less cringe artwork. Okay, so in this artwork, let me just point out the obvious mistake, anatomy which I obviously didn't understand very well. So in both Mogun's and Hyun Kyu Kim's classes, they explain about the anatomy of the faces, body parts, and poses. So in terms of art style, I think mine is more similar to Hyun Kyu Kim's, which a bit closer to realism. But even if your art style is anime, it's still important to learn the fundamentals of realistic anatomy. In Mogun's class, he explains how you can stylize realistic anatomy into anime art style without being weird and deformed like my old artwork. Okay, so I changed the pose here because this old pose looks weird. Like if you expand, it looks like this. Hyun Kyu Kim explains how to use multiple references for an illustration. So to summarize, there's a reference for the pose, the outfit, accessories, and background. Of course, this also depends on how complex the illustration you want to draw. I'm feeling fancy today, so I'm drawing Kuro with accessories and glasses. Yes, I'm into glasses now. By the way, in Mogun's class, he also explains in great detail about perspective. Did you know that you can draw a 5 point perspective? Me neither. I was actually planning to try it out in this video, but turns out my brain cells need more time to digest perspective stuff. Okay, so Hyun Kyu Kim explains that you have to define the key points in your illustrations, like where you want your audience to focus on. In a portrait, it's obviously the face, particularly the eyes. But for today, I also want to emphasize on accessories and I will apply Mogun's technique for painting shiny objects later in the video. Both Mogun and Hyun Kyu Kim do line art for their illustration. Now I am a really lazy artist, so I always skip the line art. But I will do it this time. I mean, I can't be lazy forever. Or can I? They will also share their brushes and how to use it. But for now, I will use my trusty Blackburn brush to do the sketchy line art. In the classes, they explain how to draw various lines so that your line art doesn't look monotone. They also recommend to start the line art from the face since the face is usually the key point. Now, obviously, my line art is not as good as the teachers at Colosso, but that's okay. We're all still learning. Yun Kyu Kim actually shades his line art with with hatchings, is that what you call it? Those tiny little lines you make on sketches, which I think makes the drawing even more attractive. By the way, I'm trying out a new brush called Wet Sponge. I usually use it for smudge tool, but it also works great for blush and nose. If you're more into cell shading, you know the shading that's usually found in anime, you can follow Hyun Kyu Kim's explanation for this type of shading and what color works best for it. But since I want to combine it with painting, I will follow Mogun's instructions to use soft and hard shadows. I like how Mogun's artwork is very stylized but also realistic at the same time. Like, you see the face is very anime but the legs and abdomen is more realistic. I will try to paint like that and paint more detail on Kuro's hand. For this, you definitely need a reference. By the way, should I add veins? Kuro's hair is really unique. 
so to speak. So I'm trying to do as Hyun Kyu Kim says, that is to use big brush first and then use smaller brush afterwards for the details. He also explains to use mid-tones in hair. So mid-tones is like the color between the dark and light color. It's going to give more depth on the hair. Oh, and obviously do not draw the hair one by one like I did here. Ugh. Now I will paint over my line art. I know the teachers don't do it in the two classes, but I prefer to paint over my artwork because I can just blend over my mistakes. Like I tend to make mistakes in the clothing area. Wait, am I referencing the wrong arm? Oh, maybe that's why. Okay, well, anyway. In the past, I drew Kuro's eyes like like he's insane. I mean, he is my old anime crush, mind you, and I drew him like this. Well, now I learned my mistakes and I will not draw his eyes like that again. Now I will add some highlights. I'm using light gray here, but you can also try using different color like yellow or orange. Mugun showed the color combination of pink and yellow and I think it's really pretty. And as always, I will add a bit of the skin color to the hair to make it more natural. Mugun also explains how to color shiny objects that reflects a lot of light. Basically, the shadow should follow the shape of the object since the ring is round, the shadow should be rounded as well. I will also add shadows for the ring texture and then add the highlights. It's also important to have a reference with you when you're painting. Oh, by the way, I did say that I will draw the veins. Hmm, veins. Alright, now let's add more color to the painting. In here, Hyun Kyu Kim uses light purple for the shadow color. To recreate that, make a new layer and choose color. Now I will add some blue and purple to the side of the face where the shadow are and then I will add red and orange for the lights. I will emphasize the highlights using the add layer. It basically makes your highlights glow. I usually use it for strong and small highlights. Now all that's left is fixing the details like the light on the iris and little strands of hair. And look at that, we went from this uh, to this. Oh, I almost forgot. Now he's perfect. Well, what a journey, right? Thank you so much Colosso for helping me improve my artwork. I mean, look at this comparison. If you guys want to check out Colosso, the link is in the description. They have a lot of great classes, so make sure you check them out. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.